how is everybody doing? And welcome back for another Strength Chat episode. Today, I have got a very special guest for you. Today, I'm joined by an online coach, and some may say the Thor of the fitness world. Today, I am joined by the one and only Ben Mudge. How are you doing? Very good, Stephen. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having me on. And I Good intro as well. I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I, I always say people will be uh, be sick of me saying this, but I'm actually just put did the podcast just to put out there to be a commentator. I feel like I would I, I'd be quite happy commentating on any on on any spot. Um, but no, thanks a lot for taking the time to to jump on. Uh, how have you been? What's been happening in your world recently? Good, bad, sad, happy, everything that a normal human should be experiencing. Um, no, it's, it's for the most part, it's been good. It's been a stressful year, but then with that stress has come some of the best, you know, moments of my life. So it's been, uh, it's been eventful. It doesn't feel like it's June. It feels like it's still February to me, but um, no, it's been, it's been a fun year. But uh, yeah, just like everybody, it's uh, ups and downs, but more ups than, than downs, thankfully. Um, but yeah. It's been, it's been fun. I've uh, been recovering from a knee injury that I picked up playing flag football, flag American football, uh, which was pretty, you know, movement is my thing. Like movement is my medicine, especially through the lower body. Um, and not being able to do that confidently for half a year really, it really took my confidence. Um, so I'm just slowly building that back now. Uh, got back to football the other day, which was good. Again, took it, took it easy, but Again, I had to get over that barrier. I was, I, I practice has been on for a while, but I was just holding myself back because I was just not confident. You know, like any injury, when you pick it up, the physical injury is relatively okay. You know, you go through the rehab, you strengthen it and stuff, but it's the, it's the mind that's the harder, harder uh, injury to fix because it's that confidence moving on that leg. You know, any whatever injury it is, it's that confidence to building that back up. You need to be outside of your comfort zone, yeah. and stepping outside of your comfort zone is a, is a scary place to be. So it's taken me a while, um, longer than I would like to like to admit, but uh, you know what? I started, I'm, I'm on my road back now. And then, so training, going well. I got a PB in my squat today after not squatting for a long, long time. Nice. Um, thank you. Uh, I noticed your photos in the background, so I'm not going to tell you what I squatted, but it's probably <laughs> a warm-up weight to you. Um, and then, yeah, I've launched uh, two businesses properly this year, uh, which are going really, really well. I uh, picked up a, a business partner and best friend in my uh, my friend Josh Taylor, which has been just the best. So much fun working with someone who's passionate and driven and organized. And just when two people line up and, and just want the same thing for each other, which is just the best that they can get it's it's an it's an incredible thing to be a part of and yeah thankfully this year has been has been that for me which has been incredible so yeah no complaints really yeah. oh cool and i think from the start there especially saying you know um i still can't believe that we're in you know june but Very there's cool. quite a lot of things happen to say that you know we're, we're halfway through the year which is you know pretty cool plenty of things there to keep to keep you busy and I know it's interesting you said there about, um, you know, uh, your injury and then having that confidence. I think a lot of people, that is the main barrier to overcome in terms of like physically, there's all the rehab and all the other things that you can put in place. But sometimes it's that, it's like when you fall off a bike and think, oh, I don't want to do I don't want to do that again. Um, but actually getting back to it, it's good that, you know, you can get back to it. Because I think sometimes maybe from uh, clients listening, they can sometimes be like, Ah oh, well, I'm just not going to do that again. I'm not going to try and, and try and get back to it. But actually, it could take away from something that you've actually enjoyed. You know, it doesn't mean to say they couldn't. You've done that's it. You it. Can't do it ever again. That's exactly it, and that's why I didn't play football for such a long time because I played it when I was I played kitted football and rugby at the same time. Don't advise that. <laughs> uh, when I was 17, 18, then I got a, I tore my ACL playing American football. Stopped that. Came back and was like, I'll just I'll put myself into rugby. Um, played rugby for a while and in the last game of my season I got a hernia I believe that's what happened anyway it might have been something previous to that but after that yep hernia sports hernia in Gwinnel that was uh, delightful <laughs> so then for the longest time you know I'm 32 now 32 um, you can edit that yeah. out if you want we can <laughs> yeah we can edit it I'm 22 there you go um, I feel 22 though that's the best thing like 30, that's what I'm saying it when I say my age I'm like oh crap that's uh, I'm, I'm doing alright I've got I've got some experience but um, yeah I didn't play for such a long period of time I only got back into it in 2018 
right? Because I, I was I was worried. I was like, well, at that time I was doing more one to one on the floor PTing. Um, so if I was injured, I wasn't get paid. Yeah. So I couldn't risk it. So that was part of it. But then honestly, to be to be very honest with myself and anyone listening, I was scared. Yeah. I was scared that because I, I built up, you know, when I left rugby and stuff that's when I started to put on muscle tissue and then people had this idea of who I was and, and what I was capable of doing. And if I felt like, okay, if that's what people think, cool, I'll just let that sit and just people can expect what they want. But then if I got back and either sucked or hurt myself, my ego was going to take a knock. And I was like, that's stopping me from having so much fun. Yeah. So I just put it to the side and um, I'm started having fun again, but you're yeah, just yeah. right. Like, and it's so easy to fall into that trap, you know, I talk about stuff like this and try to talk about this type of stuff as much as I can, because I think that people have a certain view of me, whatever it is, I don't, you know, whatever it is they see me as. And I don't want them to see me like that. I want them to see me as like, just look, this is a guy who was able to dedicate a significant portion of his time and attention into training and looking after himself. Because again, I set myself up so I could do that, but I'm no different than anyone else. I still have the same struggles, the same fears, the same ego like, you know, all these things that happened to me, it's just, again, social media, that whole twisting of, of reality. People seem to think that I'm immune to it. So that's why I'm so, I want to get that across that I feel all this stuff too, trust me. And if I can do it, and I really sincerely mean this, if I can do it, someone else can do it. Now, again, caveat that with, again, look at my life, look how I've set it up. You know, yeah. I don't have kids. I don't have a nine to five job. I don't sit down all day, you know. So within a certain respect, Yes, but in the other respect, I'm aware that, yeah, people don't have the life that I have because I set it up in this way. So do what you can. Like everyone's best is their best and that's so unique to them. So if you can give it, if I can give it my best, then so can you in regardless of how that takes, you know, shape. Yeah, definitely. I think that's, I think that's a really good point. I think it's, you know, relative to that, to that person, because there's probably some similarities that people can draw, but then probably polar opposites in terms of, in terms of life. And that's why, you know, at the start, I like to ask, how have you been getting on? What, what's been going on? Because, you know, that's why I stuck with the name. And I, I know we chatted a little bit before, or I mentioned it before we, we started recording in terms of I stuck with the phrase strength chat because it is that thing of, oh, yeah, actually, I've been struggling with this. But actually, this, this went really well. And I think sometimes you touched on it there in terms of, you know, social media, which is a real small snippet that people actually see mm-hmm. is, oh, that's perfect. It's a little bit like um, when, you, when you said about your, your squat PB, that might be the only thing that people see, but they haven't seen all the hours of work that you've actually put in to get yep. that to get that squat we uh, squat PB, and it kind of distorts people's vision of well, how have you set your lifestyle up so that you can do that and spend and spend time to do that? Um, it's, it's the sorry. iceberg principle. It's the iceberg principle. So I, I talk about this with Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, anything. I'm super nerd, Warhammer, whatever it is. Like you see this, you know what you see just on your glance is the tip of the iceberg like there is so much more underneath that iceberg that you just simply can't see because of the surface level of the water yeah. that's exactly how I, you know people should look at everything when a human is involved you should look at everything as if i'm just seeing the tip of the iceberg here i'm not seeing the full picture of what's going on underneath because yeah you're just right i don't put up my warm-up sets sometimes i do because i want people to see you know you should warm up before you start you know trying to do what you do but yeah, I mean, realistically, I'm like, well, okay, if I'm going to put up one video, what are probably people going to be most interested in seeing? They're not going to be interested in seeing my 60 kilo, you know, sitting at the bottom, warming up my hips. You know, they're not going to want to see that. Some people will. But yeah, again, yeah. your, you know, your ego takes over to a certain degree with social media and you're like, okay, what would I want to see? Like, what would it excite me to see? And realistically, people want to see you squatting something heavy or doing something crazy or doing something unique because that's interesting. And that's the hardest problem that you have as a coach and someone who's you know talking sense in this industry that the basics are not sexy at <laughs> all no one cares about the basics everyone wants to see that there's one trick that this pt the pts hit you know that bullshit sorry for sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's swear. fine that's fine <laughs> um but yeah it's so it's so common like people want to see something interesting again it's often a bit of a tangent but bodybuilders people are like oh bodybuilders back in the 70s look far better than the ones now Again, I'm using this in extreme as an example, but realistically, if you go to a bodybuilding, the best bodybuilding stage in the world, you want to see something that is so beyond what you could imagine that you're like, oh my God, that's incredible. Whereas if there's a bunch of, if no one took steroids, the physique, you obviously get the outliers who are just freaks in nature. Yeah. But for the most part, you're going to be like, oh, all right. 
this guy's pretty lean. <laughs> like, but there's not going to be that like, wow, like, holy, look at the size of that dude. We just can't do that naturally. Yeah. So people want to see the extremes. They don't really care about the kind of monotonous, repetitive consistency that you need to have when it comes to doing this. But that's, you know, the, where the dilemma is as a coach is like, uh, please to the people who just want to see my stuff and hopefully I can start telling them the, the smart thing and the, the things they really need to be doing or do I just put out that basic stuff and hope that your message cuts through all the bullshit that's out there. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a really good point because people do want to see that, but then sometimes they'll think, oh, well, if I train this, what do Because again, they'll have, have, have things set up in terms of they've got dedicated time to train. They'll have still, you know, had, you know, those bodybuilders will still have their nutrition plan. It's not just a case of, well, I'll just take this and then all of a sudden I'm 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 in shape. There is there is other things that you that you need to do, you know, um to to build up to that. Um Quite a lot of things that I'm sure we'll dive into a, a little bit, a little bit more. And we've touched on, you know, a little bit of your background in terms of in terms of coaching, obviously the sport that you played as well. But for for anyone listening who might not know your background, how you got involved in coaching and um, your own training, just want to give a little bit of a background to yourself. Firstly, you sound so much like Phil Lerner. It's crazy. I don't know if anyone's told you that or not. Dude, Ooh, well, first one. <laughs> dude, I was just learning. I was like. You, get, you must be from the same area. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I started, uh, fitness has been a part of my life since I can really remember. Um, my dad was ex-military, so he just kept himself in shape, and that was just his thing. He still trains in my gym. He comes to my house and trains. He's in fantastic shape at 60. But I've been doing push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups off my bunk bed since I was a kid because I just was just looking at my dad and being like, well, my dad's my hero. That's what he does. That's what I do. Like that was it. So fitness has always been a part of my life. Um, but I also have cystic fibrosis as well. So I have this illness for people who don't know what it is. Basically, cystic fibrosis affects the mucus within your body. So someone healthy without cystic fibrosis, not healthy, but someone without cystic fibrosis, the mucus in their body will be a lot like water. Uh, whereas someone with cystic fibrosis, the mucus is a lot more like uh, wallpaper paste or PVA glue. So basically the, the mucus within your body keeps your body running smoothly, much like oil in a car. If it's not there, you know, something's going to go wrong eventually. Um, so basically cystic fibrosis kills a lot of people, um, unfortunately very early in their lives sometimes due to repeated chest infections. So the chest infections, because of the mucus, the, the nature of the mucus, bacteria grows in there you know, very, very, very quickly. Uh, and then that damages the lung tissue. And then slowly over time, you lose more and more of your lung tissue. Eventually you can't breathe because your lungs are just destroyed. So unfortunately, a lot of people pass away. And then there's a multitude of, of complications that come along with that. Um, so health has always been kind of a, a priority uh, that was in my head, but also in my parents' head with myself, because my dad's understanding of it, there's no, really no internet back then. So his, his interpretation of, well, if he's fit and he's strong and he's got good posture, he's going to breathe. So posture was drilled into me from a kid. Like I stand like, like I've got a rod up my back. Um, but again, that's helping me stand tall, breathe. Uh, and then my mom was a nurse. So again, she was very cautious of my weight and stuff. And I was scarily underweight growing up. I always was so, so skinny. Um, like to the point where other parents were telling teachers that I was being underfed and you know you could nice. see my ribs through my t-shirts and you know they were worried they're just basically worried about me yeah. and then my mom had to come in and teach them like yeah okay because of CF I don't absorb nutrients properly so I could eat and eat and eat but the nutrition just is not getting into my body I'm just you know and again that's because of the mucus uh, being released and the pancreas not being able to send out those enzymes so I said long story um <laughs> So yeah, fitness has been a part of my life for a long, long time. Uh, I started training in the gym. My Santa got us a, a weightlifting kit, you know, those multi gyms, <laughs> classic ones that have everything in one. Oh yeah, is it York? Was it? It used to be York. York, York that's it. Yeah, had, the little, like, had the poster with all the moves. So I just yeah, yeah. Poster. I just do the poster thing and be like, cool. Had leg extension on it and everything. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I just wanted to not be skinny anymore. Yeah, like that was all, that's all I can remember, and I remember just trying to gain weight and thinking, oh, you know what, whenever I'm like, and I was, as I said, I was so small, so skinny. I'm not the tallest guy. I'm like five, nine. So I'm not like super tall. So I never got picked for any sports. You know, the only thing I was decent at was athletics because you didn't need to be a certain size. You just need to be fast or good at jumping or whatever it was. 
but yeah, many, many weekends standing beside my dad as a sub for, you know, the rugby team. So I think that kind of compounded and I was like, you know what, you know, I want to gain weight. There's two ways of gaining weight, gaining body fat or gaining muscle. And I was like, I would probably prefer the latter. So I started training um, and because I was so skinny, I started to see like, you know, when you're that skinny, any muscle tissue at all is like, oh, hello. <laughs> so that gave me the confidence of, oh, okay, whenever I do something a lot over and over and over and over again, there is a result. And that is probably the greatest lesson I could have learned at that age because it stuck with me. Like training is part of who I am. It's not this thing, you know, I, I pick it up and I put it down, but I will never forget about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, fast forward, I started, uh, I left school, I wanted to become a director, I wanted to work in film, did four years of that, worked on a couple of projects, worked in this first season of Game of Thrones, uh, and then I quickly realised that that wasn't the career path for me because I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep properly, I couldn't train, I was outside, uh, so my, my CF got the better of me, uh, and then I decided I needed a career change, and I spoke to a couple of the extras who were freaking jacked, they were playing Dothraki Warriors. <laughs> I was like, how are you free? Like, what do you do? What's your job? Like, and they were like, oh, I'm a personal trainer. And they were like, oh, you look like you're in decent shape. And at that point, I've been training for, you know, five years. So I had a little bit of muscle, but again, looking back, I felt like I was jacked, but I was, I was very small. <laughs> um, they explained to me what it was. And I was like, that sounds cool. And then suddenly at 21 years old, I was like, yeah, I'm going to completely change my career, yeah. which is terrifying. Um, and then I did. And honestly, it was the best decision I ever made. Now I've been coaching for 12 years. Uh, well, no, 11. I think it's 11 years this year. Um, and it's been incredible. I just love helping people. I love giving people the confidence that, you know, looking after myself gave me because if I, I mean, I'd be terrified to meet the person that I would have been if I hadn't have trained and hadn't looked after my health because I, well, I don't even know if he'd be here to be honest, because CF has a, you know, a pretty, wicked side in it to be honest so yeah yeah thanks a lot for for, for sharing that i know because obviously i am especially with cf so my go one of my uh one of my girlfriends one of my girlfriends <laughs> <laughs> i just thought i'd jump right in there no um you uh, uh, my uh, my uh my girlfriend's uh, one of her best mates has cf and okay. uh from chatting with her from seeing the training that she does and seeing her improvement in her health in terms of being really active because we've been on dog walks where she's had to wear an oxygen oxygen tank, whereas now she doesn't have to wear an oxygen tank, which, you know, I think is awesome. And how she's so active now and still going to the gym is great. And I think a couple of things from, from, from what you've said there is um, probably the, the first thing in terms of uh, obviously getting involved in uh, coaching how sort of have the uh, the challenges that you face from CF from you know we touched on it a little bit a little bit earlier in terms of judging a book by its cover seeing that you're in shape but then mm -hmm. you know it's kind of oh wait hang on a minute you 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 have C CF that's not what you'd think about and then in terms of how you've tried to sort of overcome those challenges and try to make those decisions to ultimately improve improve your health if that kind of makes sense kind of a two part of that. No, yeah. I mean, I mean, firstly, the way you said that, the order is so important. It's something I've said a, a few times to people that I would love to be recognized for my achievements and then my cystic fibrosis. Yeah. Not. And the way you said it, like, oh, he's in great shape. Oh, he also has cystic fibrosis. That that struck the, the order of that sentence is is the world to me. Yeah. I don't I never wanted people to go, oh, he's got cystic fibrosis. Look how well he's done. Yeah. I don't want pity. I don't want sympathy. Like I I don't. I don't need it. Like yeah. it's not going to do anything for me. Spend on someone who's going to benefit from it. And realistically, it's nobody. But it's helped me because I've been like, I, you know, I, I'm not going to lie and say like, oh, I've been super out of shape in terms of like from, uh, you know, I have never had a huge amount of body fat. I've never, I've never not had abs. And again, I'm, I'm aware of that. And people, you know, people are like, oh my God, he's never had that. Again, I've trained, I, my, li my lifestyle allows me to have that. The way I, my priorities allow me to have that. Now, is there a time when I probably won't have abs? Yeah, because my priorities are going to shift. That's totally fine. But I have been so unconfident and so like embarrassed and just so self-conscious about my shape that I completely empathize with someone who is feeling that way. Yeah. Because I can look at them and go, whilst it's so hard for you to, to think, oh, he's experienced that before, 
I have, like, I have, I've, I used to be terrified taking my shirt off in the rugby changing rooms. Like, I used to literally car myself in, take my shirt off, and then put it back on, towel. Like, I used to hate people, like, looking at me or, or, or even, you know, paying attention to me, which is now obviously <laughs> things have changed somewhat. But again, it's, it's the idea that I can look at someone and, and talk to someone on a level that, you know, I've not always been the way I am today. Yeah. I, I, I'm, and I think that's the best thing I can do whenever I'm connecting with a client is I understand. Like, I think, again, social media is a big part to play in this. People, when you see people on Instagram, you think, and they're just, everything looks perfect. And you're just like, they're not, they're not a person. They don't have any, you know, they don't have any struggles. You know, they're, they're, they're other than me. Yeah. Whenever I start speaking to clients and I can empathize with them and I can, you know, relate to them. It's suddenly this like, oh, oh, this guy's a real person. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm a real person. So are you going to listen to me? And, and I hopefully I can impart some form of information that's going to help you feel even 1% of how I feel. Yeah. Um, so yeah, having cystic fibrosis has helped me and shaped me as a coach. But again, it could have gone very easily the other way. Very, very easily the other way. It's a, it's a you know, a lot of people say, oh, so it can be, well, the analogy I use, it can either be a walking stick or a sword. And I was like, I'm, I mean, if someone offered me a walking stick or a sword, I know which one I'm going to pick. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. That, that's the way I've always treated it. And again, that's not all the time. I don't feel like that all the time. Sometimes I'm just like, you know what? This sucks. I, I don't like having CF. This sucks. Like, why did I get it? Why me? And yeah. I feel like that from time to time. And, you know, because I'm human, like, of course I'm going yeah. to feel those emotions. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah, it's helped me just relate to people, understand the importance of health. And most importantly, and this is the thing that I think, um, you know, I've kind of I've come to realize over the last few years is it's given me a macro perspective on life rather than a micro yeah. or the way I describe analogies again. I think a lot of people live their uh, life in first person mode. So everything's just as it is, there it is right in front of me. And I think when something either happens to you or has happened to you, you know, something quite kind of world changing, yeah. it forces you into that third perspective, that third person perspective where you can see and you're like, oh, wow, okay. So suddenly you're not aware of things around you. You know, you've just got a better sight and a better view of the world and how you fit into it. So you can see your actions and you're like, why did I act like that? What was that? What was the cause of that? And when you can do that, and again, unfortunately, a lot of people don't have that perspective because nothing's ever shook them. Like, you know, I've seen what CF can do to people. I have this image in my head of a guy who was in the uh, hospital room beside me. I've told this before, but it's just, it's stuck in my head. He was, I kept hearing this noise when I was there. I was there for two weeks and I kept hearing this noise. I was like, what the heck is that noise? It's like, sort of like a, sort of like a, like a machine, but it was like, mm -hmm. it had, like a wetness to it. That sounds gross, but like, it's like, what the hell is that? Like a plumbing or something going off in the middle of the night, but it kept happening so infrequently. There's no timing. There was just, it was just this noise. And I was like, what the hell? And then one day the nurse was doing her rounds and I could see the door kind of opposite me was open. And I looked in and I heard the noise and I was like, that's a person making that noise. That's him coughing. That does not sound human. And then I saw the guy and I was 18 again, and a pretty important time for something like this to happen and to witness something like this. I saw him and I have never been more scared, chilled. I don't know what, the, but it just, I felt it in my chest. I was like, Oh wow. That, uh, he does not look good. That's, yeah. that's what I have. I have what he has. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe I'm not immortal. Maybe I'm not this, eight, you know, 18 year old boy, just like, Oh, I'm, I'm indestructible. And I was like, Oh, and it scared the crap out of me. And I was like, just wanted to out of curiosity i was like because again with cystic fibrosis life expectancy 40s it's now improving but back then it was you know early 40s and i was like oh okay what age is that guy he must be like 40 50 and the nurse office couldn't tell me so i kind of walked past and sneakily read his chart and he was i believe three years older than me wow but the man looked like i mean i'm Unless some miracles happen, like he he's probably not around anymore. Yeah. Um, but seeing that, that just knocked me into third person. I was like, oh wow, okay. So yeah. I need to start taking care of myself. I need to start doing stuff I don't want to do because that's my reality if I don't. And I was like, I'm breaking that shit off. Like that is not an option for me. And option B does not exist. As I'm tempted to take option B a lot, but I'm like, nah, I've bricked that shit off. This is how I need to live my life if I never ever want to go down that path. So 
that perspective has given me so much in terms of being able to help other people because suddenly I can go, okay, right. I'm with a client who's stressed now, oh, I didn't like hit my calories today or I didn't work out and like big picture thinking here. Yeah. Does one day matter? No. Scratch it off, move on to the next day, do the best you can today, the next day. That, that's it. Take a step back and look at how this all shapes out. It's not the one day that matters. It's the multiple days doing the boring crap that matters. So that perspective has been, I mean, invaluable to me as a coach. Yeah, I think that, well, first of all, thanks for, thanks for sharing that. And I think one thing that you said there is, I think, again, that will be relative to, to the person in terms of something that forces that, that change, that is that extreme example that's like, oh, wow, okay, something needs to, something needs to change from there. Um, and, you know, I am a big believer in terms of, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of an analogy myself, and it's kind of like if you put something, you know, underneath the microscope and just zoom in on that one chocolate bar or that one takeaway that you had that one day, of course it's going to feel, oh, shit, why did, why, why did I have that? Whereas if you zoom out a little bit, again, bigger picture, like what you mentioned, it isn't, it isn't the end of the world because unfortunately no one's happy 24 seven all year round. If they are, I want to know what they're taking, but you know, your emotions, your emotions are going to change, your emotions are going to change. And one thing that, cause obviously, you know, you might have experienced this uh, yourself and it'd be, it'd be good to hear your thoughts is that sometimes people haven't experienced something that warrants them to change. They can still go to the gym and, and not do anything. And what's kind of the conversations that you have with, with people like that and try to find out their why and look, okay, what is it that we're aiming for? What do we need to change? What, what can we work on? What's kind of your approach to that? It's a very good question, by the way. I like that. You like <laughs> the hot ones. You like the hot ones and you know, the guy, Sean Evans. Have you seen that? Uh, oh no, I don't, I don't think check so. Check out Sean. Check out Hot One, Sean Evans. He, right. he asks. <laughs> he asks some incredibly well structured questions. Um, but yeah, you're you're giving me those vibes. <laughs> so, um, I mean, for me, whenever someone doesn't know what their why is, or or again, this is the thing: these these life changing and, and kind of third person perspective shifts that happen, generally they're not great. So it's not something you wish upon someone. You just hope that they can not have to go through that pain. But you know, sometimes that's that's the cost of, of having that. But the thing I always say to people is just, you need to talk to yourself more. You spend 90% of your time here in, the, in this thing, having conversations, you want to make it a nice place to be. But in order to get the place as nice as you, you can be, you need to understand it. Like first and foremost, you'd be like, okay, why is it you train? Because this is a difficult path to take. In, embarking on self-improvement, regardless of what shape or form it is, is a difficult path to take, regardless of who you are. Choosing that path willingly is against everything in our human nature of comfort mode, self-preservation. Stepping outside of that is like, oh crap, that's what our body is designed to stop us from doing. So by just going down that path of trying to improve yourself, you need to commend yourself immediately. Like you need to be like, you know what, go me. This is awesome. But then you need to start thinking, okay, right, well, I'm on the path. I've started the journey. Where's the map? What's, what direction, what roads am I going to take? Now, getting a coach speeds that process up exponentially because we can, you know, we've worked with thousands, hundreds of people. Chances are your problems are pretty similar to a lot of other people or the chances are we've worked someone who has a similar path to you and they're like, cool, right, this is the best path for you with my experience. So let's speed this journey up and instead of you wandering around and, and getting the wrong path, let's just get you on the right path and then we can, we can guide from there. But the advice I give to people who you know maybe don't have the, the luxury of, of affording a coach or whatever it is, is talk to yourself. So ask yourself the question and don't stop asking the word why. Don't stop doing that until you get to the very, very, very bottom of that barrel of why do you do this? So it could literally be, I'll, I'll take myself, for example, um, I want to train and I want to look the way I want to look for a plethora of reasons when I really dig down into it, it's because I feel like I was given a weakness. I'm air quoting, by the way, if someone's just listening, I've been given a weakness at birth, my cystic fibrosis. That's a genetic flaw in me. And again, this is, this is my own personal thing. So, you know, if you've got cystic fibrosis, don't take this as, you know, this is just my interpretation of it. I feel like I was given a weakness from the get go. And when I think of weakness, I don't think of strong, athletic, 
healthy looking people. They just don't, it just, it just doesn't mix. So in my head, I was like, right, well, you know, who are these people who've been given these weaknesses or, or, or different to other people? It's freaking superheroes. Like that's, that I had such an affinity with superheroes growing up. Still kind of do, you know, <laughs> old habits die hard. Um, but it was the idea of like, okay, the, these people have like, this, so Spider-Man, for example, Spider-Man looks like an everyday kid, but he's got something different that makes him feel different to everyone else, which he has to almost hide. And that's the way I felt growing up. I was like, no, no one else has what I have. They don't have to take tablets every time they eat. They don't have to go in and get, you know, because of bile obstructions, they don't like, they don't have to do what I do. So I felt so different to them. And like the, the reason why I train is because looking the way I look and feeling the way I feel helps me mentally feel like I'm beating my genetic weakness. Yeah. And that feeling of, of victory just fuels me to do everything else. And then the fact that that by just me doing what I feel is necessary is helping other people, other families, people with cystic fibrosis, people without cystic fibrosis. Dude, cannot tell you. I will never, ever, I hope I never, ever can ever describe how that feels because it is, it's what can make me do the stuff that I don't want to do on the days I don't want to do. them. Just knowing that, okay, I like, it to myself to do this but there's other people who are going to be you know it could be one i don't care if it's one person i don't care like if my stories get twenty thousand views or six i don't care if i help one person by just going oh okay yeah maybe i'll do that okay or i should you know get up and go for a walk or drink a bit more water whatever it is having that ability to do that is something i will never ever ever not appreciate it's such a such a beautiful thing to be able to 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 give the other people by just simply going i'm just looking after myself you yeah. know in a selfless way or, or a selfish way but yeah. and, it, and it's infectious because you kind of feed off the people it's, that you help it's and symbiotic that, symbiotic yeah. and yeah. that and that's why you know originally you know strength chat started because people asked me questions and i thought it would be cool to say with my phone going hey this is episode one and then obviously it grows it, it grew from there to you know have coaches such as yourself to you know, have topics in terms of, well, what happens? Why do we find our why? Why is it that you're doing something? Why is it that, you know, you want to, um, uh, an example, just because I trained her this morning, um, she's doing, she's been doing strength training in the, in the gym. She's got relatively strong. She wants to do a first competition. Why? Well, actually, um, from having, a, a, from having a kid taking time away from what she's wanting, she wants to do a competition to prove that she can commit time to herself to go do a competition. Awesome, buzzing. Let, let, let's let, let's go from there. And you know, is is that thing of if one person can take something from it, then you know, at least then you've helped there because that's the whole role of a coach to you know to 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 help um, to help people and you know give them a direction you know to to work towards um, or work as a team to, to help them go toward towards that. Um, in terms of sort of the. Um, uh, the one thing that you that kind of jumped out to me there is obviously you spoke about uh, speaking to yourself. And I think sometimes uh, when I've had conversations with clients, sometimes like, what do you mean talk to yourself? Do I need to look in the mirror like cool runnings and be like, hang on. Whereas I think the, yeah, I think the, I think the biggest thing for me is um, so I read the the chimp paradox, which was which was really a really interesting read. Sort of you know, there's t t parts of your brain that you that you need to speak to, and you know what's the process is. Do you find that sometimes people do struggle with that and be like, what what do you mean? How do I? How, why should I be asking why? Or how do I? How do I go about that? Yeah, I think a lot of people struggle with that. Um, and the way I've kind of expanded upon this, or tried to explain it, or even just try to understand it myself was okay why do people why are people scared of kind of diving deeper into their minds it's because it's scary under there yeah you can uncover a lot of a lot of stuff that you didn't really want to discover but unfortunately the deeper you well the deeper you go the more connected you're going to feel to yourself and a lot of people just avoid that they live in kind of this bubble where they're like oh well no don't question that don't just skirt you know let's just ball that up that's <laughs> not let's put that in a box and forget about it and then they live at the surface level for their entire life. And that's, to me, probably one of the scariest and most painfully sad things. Because when you get to know yourself more, and again, I'm not speaking from like, I'm not a master of this. Like, I'm still learning myself and like, yeah. learning who I am and what I want and what makes me happy. But the, the deeper you go, 
the more, as I said, connected you become, and that allows more of you to come out. Like, and and more of you is always going to be a good thing, unless you know you're Hitler or something like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> in which case, less of you. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, like the more of you that you can bring out to the world, the better your the better everything's going to be. You're going to find more enjoyment in the things you love. You may find new things that you did no idea that you love, but because you're getting to know yourself more and you're like, well, you know what? Why am I scared of doing that? Because of what people think. Well, do people really care what I do? Nah. Cool. Let's go do that. That can then encourage new relationships, new friendships, new experiences, new memories. And look, at the end of the day, life is super fast. As we've discussed, it's June already. The more experiences, the more memories you can create, the realistically, the better your life's going to be. And I think that is the most important thing, uh, just creating memories. And I said, so, yeah, you're going to have to dig deep and you will struggle. But just like everything, it's about reps. Just do it over and over. It's not one individual rep that gets you strong or gets you in shape or gets you healthy. It's multiple reps. And are they going to all look pretty and perfect? No. A lot of them are going to look ugly as shit and they're going to be uncomfortable but that's just like anything in life. You have to put in the reps and they're going to suck sometimes. But again, trust me, the, the payoff is, I mean, you couldn't put a price on it, in my opinion. So, Yeah, definitely. I think that's the thing of, um, again, we, I should have put started a t- uh, telechat with the uh, analogies. Um, <laughs> it's, invest, it's investment. You know, I always use that thing of, right, you want, a, uh, you want a car, so can you afford a car right now? No. All right. So what would you do to buy a car? Well, I'd save up for it. Money. So what would you do? Put uh, a tenner away a week or something like that? How would how would you do that? You'd keep investing. And that's the same with the exercise, same as, you know, you know, analogy with, with the repetitions. And I think sometimes, and we touched on it a little bit um, uh, about in terms of, you know, judging a book by its cover, uh, by, you know, assuming that this is what you see. And I think with social media and everything out there there's sometimes a distorted view of what you should be doing well you should be following this training program well you should be following this diet whereas actually ultimately and you kind of hit the nail on the head it's the basics doesn't really matter what diet you follow well are you getting protein in? are you getting veggies in are you drinking enough water all right well follow whatever diet you want but ultimately they all come back to that to that same to, the, to that same principle and you know then that way we can rather than yes, we'll have our goals that we're working towards, but that can be so overwhelming. Whereas exactly what you said, all right, well, this is where I want to go. What's that journey up to it? A little bit like the, the client that I said I coached this morning, she wanted to get stronger. That journey's now taken on her to do um, a powerlifting competition. And actually in the session, we were watching the stream of, the, um, of yesterday's IPF World Championships. So then that's a memory of like, well, I see this lift. This this was pretty cool, and that and that's part of it. You know, I think sometimes that can be forgotten. Uh, sometimes when it comes to training, and you know, not everything's going to work all the time. What's that? Um, is it a, a Paul Carter quote where it's you know, uh, so much percent of the time you're going to feel rubbish, so much percent of the time you won't want to come in, and then the rest of the time it's just sometimes you just need to you need to get it done. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're talking about dealing in terms of like your know, absolutes. As such of like, oh, you need to be doing this or you need to be following this. And it, realistically, that's not the case. Mm-hmm. And the nerdiest thing I'm ever going to say is only the Sith deal in absolutes. <laughs> that's just the way to like the bad guys deal in absolutes. And that you see it so many, oh, this is the one thing that you're not doing or you need to be doing this exercise or this, you need to be eating like this. Like if anyone says you need to do this, just be aware that they are casting the biggest net possible. And they're not speaking to you as an individual. And if they're not speaking to you as an individual, probably not going to be the best person to work with like that's simple as that like you need to be able to speak to the person as an individual and again that dealing in absolutes if every if if one thing worked our career wouldn't exist (laughs) like it it literally just like at birth here give them this this is the workout they need to do this is how they need to eat that's it and they'll be healthy for the rest of their life that doesn't exist because people are different like so dealing with that like absolute like this is the way you have to do it's the only way to do it like as I said, with my like the way I describe my you know job is, is a is a pathfinder. I think it's a far more accurate way of describing art the actual processes of like right. You know, Kathy comes to me and is like, I want to lose some weight, and I'm like, okay, cool. Where are you at? Let's find out where you know what if you're you know fit enough for this path, or you're you know maybe more suitable for this path, or whatever it is. And you're like, okay, so based on my experience, this is the best path for you, Kathy. Now I can't walk it, 
but I can guide you along and I can help you. I can give you, you know, I can be the, I can be the Sam to your journey. Dude, I'm nerding out hard in this one. I can be the Sam to your journey. I can keep you going when you don't want to go. Again, bad days are going to happen. Just accept it, but just pick yourself up and move on. But again, that just comes from experience of knowing what is the best path and not dealing in absolutes and realizing, oh, I hear this, this approach that I thought was bulletproof. Ah, maybe, maybe it's not, maybe there's a different way. And it's about, again, ego. Ego is the destruction of so many, you know, incredible things in the world. Taking your ego out of it and being like, okay, so maybe that worked incredibly for a hundred people, but this one person said it doesn't work. Okay. What does that, what works for that one person? And then finding out and challenging yourself and, and being ready to just be like, yeah, you know what? I thought this was hundred percent foolproof. turns out it's not, you know, I mean, how many things would you, if you look back at your career as a coach, do you remember the, some of the things you would tell people and now you're like, Oh God. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> then I think it's, there's going to be a, uh, I would love to put a highlight reel and just be like, well, oh, why did I, why did I say that? I think a lot of the, the things that you mentioned there, you know, we we're, we're in the uh, business or industry, if you like, of, um, working with people and everyone's going to yeah. be different. Um, I enjoyed all of the all of the analogies uh, that you said there, and I had to throw in. I was kind of I was I was just going to interrupt, but as soon as you said, "If we were all the same," I wanted to carry on the Star Wars analogy of then we don't just all be stormtroopers. Um, so yeah, I'm a man after my own heart mentioning mentioning a couple of those the, those films there. But you know, it, it is right. You know, there's sometimes which you see you see quite a lot in terms of. You know, I, I usually use this phrase of if you throw enough shit at the wall, it's gonna it's gonna stick. It's not gonna work. It's, it's that one myself. I had this conversation on uh, Wednesday or Tuesday, and uh, I train the majority of people who want to get stronger and, and, and put muscle on. And um, I've given people similar cues, the similar exercises, but it's always tweaked to match where that where, where that person is. And the, the example I use is I've got a guy who uh, we spent a long time uh, working on his shoulders. He had a shoulder injury before and he really struggled with benching. And because he always struggled with bench, but all of his mates were, oh, well, I bench this and I bench this. He wanted to get his yep. bench. A couple of other guys have got bigger benches. So he was learning, he was taking tips off them, whereas it's kind of, you know, having that conversation of, look, the tips that I've given them are for them. What we're trying to work on, again, this is your sort of journey, your path of, right, we need to work on this to get us to get a bigger bench. Whereas, you know, the more diversions that we take, it's just going to make us, you know, take longer to get there, get take yeah. long to get there. Yeah. Which I think is, you know, um, important for, for people to, to realise. Um, one thing that we that we've touched on a little bit as well is in terms of you know um, you've mentioned there at, at the start of setting up your lifestyle so you can train so you can do the other things and have that balance a little bit more. How sort of you know when people say um, well I can't do this because I've got this obstacle or I'm lacking motivation or um, well I'm just not meant to put muscle on this is just how I'm going to be and what's kind of um, especially from your experiences. How do you get around that or actually realize or, or you know, come, uh, chat with your clients about, look, what, how can we work around these rather than, again, what you mentioned, those absolutes that people think of? That's a good question. The, so the way I always approach things, because like overwhelm happens, lack of motivation, um, the M word is a, oh, I, have a, I have a strong hatred for that one. Because um, <laughs> realistically, look, I'll, I'll address this quickly. Motivation has very little to do with the end result. It's, it's there, and the analogy I used the other day, it's like a fart in the wind. One moment it's there, next it's gone. And relying on that as a source of fuel and a, a, you know, a driver of you getting your results, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Like, I'd say in 100 sessions, I'm motivated to do maybe 10 of those 100. And that's pushing it, probably. Like, I'm never like, yuck. oh, I cannot wait to go in and just rip this session. But I... I doesn't really happen, like very, very rarely. So 90% of those sessions, you're not going to be motivated to do. Knowing that is incredibly freeing. Knowing that, okay, yeah, you know what? I, I shouldn't feel motivated all the time. That's enough for someone to be motivated enough to go to the gym. <laughs> like that's, that's it. So motivation, again, amazing when it's there, but the party still goes on if it's not. The other thing I do, you know, when a client gets overwhelmed or says, oh, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do this. I don't do the whole like, oh, you've got time. Everyone's got the same 24 hours in a day. I'm, I'm not a dick. <laughs> I know that everybody's life is set up extremely differently. So for me to be like, you've got that time. 
I can't say that with confidence because I don't know every intricacy of their life and I shouldn't as a coach. I should know enough, but I shouldn't know every single R what they're doing. That's 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 not my thing. That's not that's micromanaging. So to me, it's just a case of okay, what can you do right now? So a perfect example: a client got super overwhelmed. She's doing really really well. Um, her name is Dre, and she got like super overwhelmed with everything. Just everything got on top of her. And I said, right, Dre, what can we do to just get the ball rolling again? That's the hardest thing. Is like you know, I always visualize that you know this momentum is literally you pushing a rock up a hill, and it's this. It's getting that momentum. It's the initial push to start that thing moving that is the diff- most difficult part. And you have to be prepared to do that lots and lots and lots of times. You have to be willing to be like, okay, the whole, all the momentum's gone here. Boom, start pushing it again. So I just said, Dre, right, what can you do? You're working, you know, nine hours on the computer all day. What's your step count like? And she's like, oh, it's pretty bad. It's like, you know, 5,000, less than 5,000 or something like that. Well, no, it was actually, it was lower than that. It was about two or three. And I said, right, okay, so what I want you to do just today, I want you to purposely stand up and walk for five minutes. Pick a song, five-minute song, and just consciously make the decision, I am now moving for five minutes. This isn't like, on t- you know, oh, I have to go to the, the, you know, the shop or I have to go into my car or whatever. It is like, right, five minutes of purposeful intention. And then after that, you're going to drink 500 milliliters of water. And we did that, and I kept a tally. I was like, message me every single day that you've done that. And then we did it and I was like, okay, add 10 minutes today. Not every single day, just 10 minutes once per week. Yeah. And we built it up and we built it up and we built it up. And now she is absolutely smashing it again. But again, that's probably going to happen to her again. It's probably going to happen to all my clients at some point again. But it's all about just breaking that all the way down so they cannot fail. And eventually they'll start to go, ah, oh, you know what? I could probably work for, I could walk for 15 minutes. They'll start to challenge themselves and start to build that confidence. But, you know, it's really just meeting the client where they're at. And then working out, okay, big picture. Look, I'm, I'm here to write programs and I'm here to help you with nutrition. I'm here to help you guide your lifestyle. But none of those things matter if you can't do them. Yeah. So what can we do? And let's just start layering as we get confident and we'll just, we'll just roll, you know, get the ball rolling from there. So that's generally what I would do. And I've done that multiple times with clients. Yeah. I think that's I think that's really good for um, especially as a as an example, but also you know a good, a good reminder of because I think especially from a uh, the phrase that I always like is that uh, the clients will never see their potential; they'll only see that oh well I can't do this. Whereas the the coach will always see their potential and see look you know you've shown that you can do that. You know with your client they've they've had success in the in the past. How do we get that you know ball rolling again and I think what I like about there is, and you know, it shows that I'm maybe not going too far wrong when I'm speaking with clients is it's much better to add something in and feel as though you're working towards something rather than saying, let's start off with all of this. Oh, well, we'll take this away because you can't do this. I'll oh, we'll take this away because you, you can't do this. Whereas the more things that you add in, I always think it like, um, uh, I, I always use the analogy of um, used to get seconds at school and I used to love seconds. So if you get an extra portion, it's like, Oh, winning and that feeling of you get an extra um something uh, yeah you only do yeah one workout you're going to do two oh well that's a bonus we, we've, we've done everything from there which is you know exactly. um, uh, i think people need to um uh, buy into and think you know actually you know you can build up you can stop and start you know it's like being in traffic but you still you still head in the right direction um quite a lot of topics covered there um, and, and, and a few tangents thrown in the last question that I like to ask is from everything that we've chatted about there, what would be your take home points or words of wisdom? Hmm. I think you'll be able to edit out the long pause while I try and <laughs> remember everything I've, I've said. Um, so this is just something that I just believe in as a person. I think this really can help a lot of people. And it's the idea that at any point in time, you can decide to be a different person. Like, and I don't mean different, you know, as in like, not you. I mean, just I, the best version of you. So at any point you can decide, right, I want to be the guy who wakes up earlier. I want to be the guy who, when he says he's going to do something, he does it. Or I want to be the woman who says, you know what? Like, yeah, I'm strong and I'm going to be the strong one. Like I, I've, people unfortunately live in the shell that they have been given or that they kind of get themselves cozy in for the rest of their, their, their entire lives. 
the perfect example I always use is, what if Michael Phelps never got in a pool? <laughs> I, we wouldn't know who he was. And think about how many people in the world we don't know about because they never pushed themselves or never stepped into a, a realm of uncomfortableness. Like, it's, it's, it's sad. Like, so at any given point in time, and I've done this myself, like, I remember, so as I said, growing up, I was not the most confident person in the world. Um, and I remember I used to go to my Nana's when I was in primary school because I used to get picked on because I used to have a bit, I used to have to eat more food than, than the other kids. So I used to go over there for lunch and she would cook my, uh, my toasty. She'd make me a toasty. <laughs> And in the, like one of her, like one of the things she had on her wall was, it was Cary Grant quote. And I think it was, pretend to be the person you want to be until you become that person. Something along those lines. I was maybe like, you know, primary school, what, 10, eight, nine, 10. And that stuck in my head. And I was like, that's, that's kind of cool. I, I like that. Like, so you just pretend to be the person you want to be. And eventually when you keep pretending, people then start treating you like that. And then you start to become that person and, you know, hopefully in a good way. And then I, after I left school, at 16, I then joined and started doing my media studies. And I remember the first day sitting, and I'll never forget this, I was 17. I remember sitting in the in the classroom and I didn't know anybody. I was like, none of these people know who I am. I was like, I'm just going to pretend to be confident. I'm just going to pretend to be like sporty. I'm just going to I'm just going to pretend to be who I would like to be. And it worked. People started like treating me like, oh, he's super confident. He's like super happy. He, oh, if, if anyone needs to be like the actor of this, like everyone's like, oh, Ben will do it because he, you know, he wants to be there. And I was like, I don't, but okay, <laughs> like this will, this will work. So again, the, the idea of at any point in your life, at any point in the day, it doesn't need to be a certain thing. It doesn't need to be a Monday. You can decide who the fuck you want to be. And that is very, very powerful. That is a power that every single person has. And yet they never really touch it. I think that so. was a, a gold nugget of, uh, of wisdom there. It kind of, we touched, we've touched on it at different points um, uh, throughout that, throughout the chat of, you know, having an extreme example of something to switch your mind. Whereas actually, you know, I think, I know I can relate to that. You know, it's that thing of, Ah, right. Okay. So yeah, I do want, I do want to be that. I don't want that, that of, oh, well, I'm not going to get this done because then nothing would get done. Everything would just, would just leave to one side. Whereas everyone, I think everyone's always got that image of who they want to be. But again, it's that comfort zone. They're scared that, oh, well, what if, what if I, do, maybe that fear of failure, what if, what yeah. if I don't do it? Whereas, so what? You can still, you still do something else. It's that doesn't work. It's not as though like, you know, that's it. There's going to be a big, red cross put on your back now right you failed so everyone knows that they're, they're a failure it's like right you can you can go from there um, i mean the time's going to pass regardless of what you do may as well do something absolutely um thanks a lot ben for taking the time uh, to jump on really really enjoyed ch okay. chatting with you today um loads of uh, really good points and and take home points there as well um, for anyone listening who might have any questions about what we've chatted about today, see the content that you put out there, um, or just get in touch with you, where, where could people uh, find you or reach out to you? So you can either follow me on Instagram, Ben Mudge underscore, um, or you can follow the Be More Uni, which is my other company, my uh, personal training company. So either one of those um, and ask questions. Yeah. I mean, ask away. I'm more than happy to help. Awesome. Thanks again for taking the time to jump on. Like I say, really, really enjoyed this chat. Um, thanks a lot to everyone listening, and I will see you all next week.